Good evening, everybody. It's evening for me. Maybe it is for you. Maybe it's morning. If so, good morning or afternoon. I wanted to do a video talking about this toe crack problem that I put up in the community area a few days ago. And it's a big deal. So I wanted to cover it in a little bit more detail for everybody here and uh, help you understand why this is so important to pay attention to and how to recognize it and how to solve it. So we're going to cover a lot of material in this. Hopefully it doesn't go for too long, but um, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so what we have here are the same foot, but about two years apart. And my theory is it takes about the same amount of time to take something out as it is to put something in. So this crack that we can see uh, in this top foot took quite a long time to get this way. So let's get the uh, let's get the text out of the way, and we can see in great detail. I'm really going to zoom in here so you guys can really see what's going on. Okay, so this is a foot that um, has been neglected for way too long. Uh, a foot. Whether it's related or not, I'm not entirely convinced or sure. I can't really say, but this horse was shod for an awful long time of its life. Uh, but mostly it was trimmed poorly. Now, let's talk quickly about what uh, causes these cracks. And we'll just grab uh, the brush tool here for a second, get some red. And that way I can sort of uh, lay out what is going on with that. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to talk about what's going on with this foot, why it happens, and how we might think about solving it so that hopefully we can get to this bottom hoof, which does not have a crack in it. Okay, so let's back up to the top. Okay, so in the hoof, we really want to concentrate on this area that is right here. And the, the, the reason a crack happens, the simplest reason, the most obvious reason ever is going to be that the hoof wall ends up splitting apart. And the analogy I gave in the article was about two popsicle sticks, or two popsicles with the popsicle sticks where you split them apart and the popsicles just come apart. And so the cause of that is usually in, in the hoof, we're going to see long pillars. So these two parts of the hoof here essentially are going to be long. Okay, so if the pillars are here, the toe is here. So we need to think about the parts of the hoof. Very, very important. So when the pillars get long, so these two sections here get long, essentially what happens is, is the middle goes that way, and this way goes that way. And it splits apart, just like that popsicle. The two popsicles together with the popsicle. Anyways, the point is, is that the mechanical leverage caused by long pillars, forces the middle part to come apart. Now, why the middle part? Well, the middle part, as we can see here, let's get rid of all this stuff again. As we can see here, there has been, I trimmed this foot, actually, for that matter, not to what it looks like here from what it was when it originally came. But way down here is where my trim kind of comes to. And the horse's trim, which sounds weird, but it's natural trim, the natural uh, movement that it has when it's stepping forward. Usually horses just walk forward. They do some steering and turning and stuff like that, but most of their movement is done forward. So all of this, all of this material here is actually worn by the horse. So it's... It's not going to be the area of the foot that receives that mechanical leverage, that, that extra bit of hoof that extends down past the whole foot. And then, and then it's like um, if you had long fingernails, you, you're going to have more leverage on that fingernail because it's long compared to a short one. So you'll break it or you'll pull it off your finger. And that's sort of the, the concept that we have to think about when it comes to looking at the pillars here and here being long is they pull outwards and the one section of the hoof that's in between that and also is short uh, which uh, tends to help a little bit to split is of course right in the middle okay so now that we understand exactly why this happens we can also see the amount of damage this crack actually goes up to there this is the whole crack like this 
So it's it actually goes to here, which is about halfway up the foot. So even if we took the very bare minimum of of healing this hoof up, it would still take about six months, even if it actually could just close up. But we have a problem with this. And the problem is all of this down here is pure rot. So what we can probably surmise just by looking on the outside of the foot is that this area down at the bottom is rotten and is probably rotted inside. Now, some might call that uh, a grounds for uh, um, a resection. So they take off a whole out outer wall. I don't recommend that much at all myself, but, you know, to each his own. Um, what we really want to do is be able to have that grow out. Because what happens is, is way up at the top here, that's called the coronet band. Now, the coronet band grows the hoof wall. The hoof wall grows down, right? So um, if we were to let a hoof, if we were to mark the hoof way at the top with some kind of marker that stayed on forever, uh, it would take this red mark to travel all the way down here close to a year. Um, and uh, that that's that's pretty universal. I'd say that's generally accepted. Anywhere from probably ten months to a year uh, on most horses. So that's how we can kind of figure out that the crack here, right at the top, is about halfway. Yeah, about halfway down the foot. So a good a good six months. But that's not how it works, because this area is so rotten, it's very, very weak. Uh, it's been compromised. And what happens is, is that rot sort of still lives in there. It takes a while for the hoof as it goes downwards. Um, and, and, uh, and sort of pushes out or grows out all of the bad stuff, all of the rot or all of the necrotic tissue, all that dead tissue that lives in there. And as it grows downwards, it pushes that out. But it doesn't clean it out all in one go. It actually takes a couple of goes. That's why we're looking at a couple of years for a full recovery. And then I did a little bit longer before I took a picture and made sure that it was totally clean. So the solution to this, you actually, surprisingly, the solution to this is let the horse wear their toe out where they wear it out and then do a little bit more. But make sure these pillars over here come very close to matching what the toe is wearing. Now the toe is always gonna be a little bit more worn than the rest. And if we place a hoof straight down totally upon its sole without any wall on the outside, you can have issues. So there's always a good idea to just leave a little touch, but the toe gets worn down straight to sole level. I don't have any. I don't have any pictures on hand to look at that right now. But the bottom line is, we have to get rid of the mechanical leverage of the two pillars. Once those are gone, then there is no more movement of the hoof wall going this way and this way. And instead, all of the hoof wall that kind of grows down in this fashion. You see all these these cracks that kind of run here, and this this is superficial. You can see these are just noticeable gaps between the tubules, which are like pieces of straw, like like straightness straw that comes down and they just grow downwards. And that's what makes up the hoof wall. So uh, as those grow down, uh, the the hoof wall up here is still connected. It's when it gets down a little bit further, the mechanical leverage just sort of pulls it apart. And it starts to kind of go this way, and it goes that way. And so it pulls it apart. So without making sure that this bottom edge is no longer pulling the hook apart, never solve this, ever, ever, ever. It'll always just, because it's already weak at the very bottom, the crack is already there. So this, this part of the hoof here, which is still un uncracked has to finally uh, it has to stay together all the way down to the bottom and that actually takes quite a while it takes some very consistent trimming if you miss a trim you're just going to slow yourself down and it's uh, it's not good the other thing that we can note about this hoof is the uh, 
the walls on the side and how they make this bell shape. This is called flare. You see that shape there. Uh, ideally, if, uh, if I just change the color here for a second, we'll go to, say, a green color, something like that. Ideally, this will come down. Uh, let's make uh, another layer. And we'll take this red layer and we'll just kind of bring it down for a second so we can see where the hoof wall is. Select our new layer. And we can see here that the hoof wall starts here. You know, and it starts to veer outwards. So ideally, though, now a hoof is actually, um, it's not cylindrical, it's conical. So there's always going to be a bit of a cone shape to it. But ideally, this hoof wall would come down a little more like that. Same on the other side. We can see how it starts right up there. It starts to veer outwards. But we don't want it to veer outwards nearly that much. It should come down a little bit more like that. Roundabouts. And, and it'll be slightly conical. That would be ideal because that will provide... Uh, when, when the hoof sort of hits the ground, the walls absorb that pressure uh, of the, the hoof landing. If this is the bottom of the hoof and down here is a horse and this hits the ground, go like that, um, then the, the pressure is going to be taken, the, 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 the weight of the horse is going to be taken mostly straight on. If you get a flare to it, and the, the hoof wall is pushed outwards, as it comes down, it's going to continue to push outwards in compared to being more perpendicular to the force applied. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's why we don't want to see flare in, in hoof walls. So not ideal. So that's the main problems that we can see. The other thing that we can see if we just switch back to our other layer and put the opacity back up like that. The other thing that we can see, which is, it's a bit of a big deal, and I'll explain it because I think it's important, but we can see right here, there's a bit of a shadow right along this section here. There's a bit of shadow here, or highlight and shadow here. Another one here uh, extends over this way. It's kind of hard to tell in this light. There's another one here here, here, up here, and they extend all the way around. What these are, are these, these, these bumps or ridges, are telltale signs. I'll get rid of all those. You can take a look for yourself. You should be able to see each one of these. These are telltale signs of what would be a late trim. So what happens is the, the trim is late, and the bottom of the hoof, all the way around, essentially, usually will will hit sort of hard ground. Ground that doesn't give nearly as much. This horse was mainly on soft ground, so these ridges aren't very big, but on harder ground, it'll be way more obvious. And then what happens is way up at the top, at the coronet band, where the hoof is being created, and it's a little bit softer, what happens is it sort of bunches up. So uh, to demonstrate this, we're actually going to quickly flip on over to my 3D software. And so what I have here is just a hoof shape. And uh, what we need to do, if we if we look at this, we can kind of see that I've got some shape to it, and I've got uh, a series of what we call geometry, or polygons. Okay, so inside of here, what we need to do to show you what I want to do is we need to kind of add some geometry to this. So I'm just going to uh, go into it, and then just right-click, and I'm going to choose this mode called subdivide and uh, we're going to add a pile more detail so this is probably good enough and this is kind of like except for these horizontal lines the vertical lines are a lot what a horse hoof is except there's thousands more um, but this is good enough for what we need so with that we can come out of there and we can head on over to sculpt mode and inside of sculpt mode we're going to draw. And um, let's see. So when we're thinking about the ridges that live there, what we need to do is, is, is indicate 
how these ridges start. So I'm just going to draw around the hoof like this. And you can see how that ridge has started up. Okay. And what happens is, is as, as the, as the foot hits the ground, impact goes upwards into the hoof and it hits up here at the, at the coronet level, up at the top. And it creates these, these ridges. And there'll be, you know, one from a while ago, it'll be somewhere back here. There'll be another one from a long, long time ago. There'll be another one kind of long like this. And what, what that, what these are, are almost like tree rings, you know, where you, you can tell how old a tree is. Well, these kind of tell you when the late trim happened, uh, or when it didn't get trimmed, but some impact happened. And these tubules get sort of jammed up into the coronet band and bump out. Okay, so we head back over to the Photoshop here. We can see that we've got, you know, somewhere along the lines of here, uh, a trim didn't happen that should have happened. And another little one here, we can see another one here, you know, a trim should have happened, another one here, a trim should have happened, another one here, that travels over here, when a trim should have happened, because it's created some ridge. So that, that kind of tells us about the trimming cycle the growth to trim cycle of the horse. So that is assessing a horse hoof um, to as much level I think that we can do in this picture. So let's let's um, let's take a look at the the fixed hoof. And sort of the first thing that we can see, if we look at this, is we've kind of got a little bit shorter of a hoof. Uh, the the scale is about the same. I tried my best to make the scale as close as possible, but it's a little bit shorter of a hoof. It's a longer hoof, um, so and quite healthy. So let's take a look what has happened. So I'm the only person who takes care of this. So any mistakes in here or any problems in here are mine. But the first thing we can see is that there is absolutely no sign whatsoever of a crack anymore, and that has come from taking care of the two pillars. So this section here and this section here. And that allowed the toe to completely close and heal up, push up out, out all that stuff. Um, now, I don't set the schedule for this horse, but I have advised the owner to uh, do some of her own work or call me when she needs to, but we try to do a trim every three weeks. It wasn't always the case. So we can see just barely there are some some ridges here, here. We can see a slight line kind of traveling here, but they're much closer together uh, uh, and smaller. So it essentially means that the trims happen more often. They might have been a week late perhaps, maybe a week and a half or something like that. There's a bigger one up here that we missed, and I remember this one. It's weird. Once you start to recognize hooves and the problems with hooves, you start to recognize when things happen. Like, oh, I remember this. They didn't call me out for a month and a half or something like that. Um, you'll be able to tell, you know, and that that's about, I mean, based on, get rid of all these red marks, this is distracting, but based on sort of the distance from the coronet band down to here, I'd say it's about eh, a couple months when this non-trim happened. Right? Uh, the other interesting thing to note about this hoof is this weird sort of smile that's happened here. We're seeing we're seeing um, sort of the end of the two-year cycle uh, of of bad hoof finally being taken away. And without even looking from the front, I trimmed this from the bottom, without even looking from the front, I had actually seen that I needed to raise this up higher. And and what's happening here? How come this comes down and makes sort of this, this line here? Kind of goes around like that. So I've got that pretty good. But this is, this is bumped upwards. And the fact of the matter is, is that um, this side seems to grow... Um, uh, not grow, sort of uh, doesn't wear down as much. So this horse uses the toe and the left side more than this side. So what you get 
when this happens is is just based on confirmation of the horse because you can see up here it's pretty level we've got a pretty we don't have this what what i call the smile where it comes down and then it comes up this is pretty round you know it's it's sort of this little ridge here it's 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 sort of off balance a little bit, but the horse is also, he's an old horse, so he's got some confirmation issues, especially from having bad feet for so long. Um, but this, this down at the bottom is finally going to be going away, and it travels just like that. You can see it. I take away that red line, it should be there. All right, put it back. Uh, isn't it control Y to bring it back? Nope, guess not. All right. Oh, oh I see what I've done. I changed the color. The color changed. You guys can see that. Anyway, so the, once once we go through another trim cycle, this bump will be gone, and it'll be gone for good. So, um, and then take note of the walls. Oops, and come a little bit too far out, um, like that. And this one too. It's conical, like that. And if we uh, just zoom out real quick and move over, we can see the difference in the shape of these flares. So the red flare up top, let's get rid of the green for now. Uh, the red flare up top isn't, the, the red conical, or we could call it flare, on the bottom is much, much less compared to the top. And the top has much more of a... Um, of a, of a curve to it. So that's sort of the solution to, sort of, to dealing with these problems, dealing with flare, dealing with cracks, and watching out for those rings. Rings indicate that, that somewhere along the line there was a late trim and the hoof wall had to sort of jam up and then make a bump. We'd like that to be as smooth as possible. And we can see between these two that the bottom one is a little bit smoother. Um, older horses are a little bit harder to take care of here and there, for sure. Uh, and especially his feet have some unhealthiness to them. Uh, but overall, a much cleaner uh, hoof and uh, obviously healthier because that crack is long gone. The flare is gone, so the hoof walls now meet the ground in a more perpendicular manner, which is really good. Quite uh, quite happy with this progress. So if there's any questions or thoughts, let me know anytime, of course. And that concludes this, so hopefully it's been interesting, and I will see you guys in the next one.